Welcome to today's episode. Now many customers around the world do want to keep their data on premises for a variety of reasons. Could be regulatory, could just be that they want to and there is no legal or compliance issue why to do so. Now regardless of what your motivation is or the reason why you want to keep the data on premises, you're still going to have to compete with companies that go all into the cloud. So today I want to talk to you how you can be cost efficient, similar to the persons that go to the cloud with Azure and Azure Stack while keeping the data on premises. Azure Stack is the top notch hybrid platform of Microsoft that allows you to bring a piece of the pie or in this case a piece of the cloud to your on-premises where you have the same user experience but also the same web platform, the same APIs and the same DevOps model to do so. So let me show you in the browser. Here you see the Azure platform, you see all the resources that are deployed here and here in the first tab we see the Azure Stack as you can see the same here. So they look identical, they are the same and it really allows you to write one code and deploy it in both places at the same time. Despite all of those benefits, a core advantage to using the cloud is access to scalable resources that can rapidly match what can be massive fluctuations in demand. This is especially the case when coupled with container orchestrators like Kubernetes, which provide us with a consistent deployment framework, access to cloud-first development processes and efficient use of cloud resources. With on-premise infrastructure, you typically plan capacity around known peaks in demand. And based on the impact of longer processing times or maybe not meeting SLAs, you might be prepared to take the hit in sales or customer satisfaction, occasionally to save infrastructure and related costs. Using Azure Stack together with Azure, you can right-size your local infrastructure based on lower steady state, demand level and maintain data locally, then leverage the Azure Cloud for instant elasticity. To show you this in action, let's take a look at Northwind Cloud Flowers. They're a super famous flower store, they're super successful. Now the difficult thing about the flower business is you have a lot of unexpected pikes. I mean, you have the expected high demands around Mother Day, Valentine's Day, even holidays like Christmas, where you have a peak in flower orders. But there can be any unexpected peak throughout the year. Could be some royal princess or prince gets married, they get a baby, or maybe somebody passes away and people buy flowers. In this particular case, the board of Northwind Cloud Flowers decided that they want to keep all the data on premises. And so to make that reality, they set on the solution as we have described. But let me show you here. So if we click on the Azure Stack, where this app is hosted currently, you can see we have a SQL DB here. In this particular case, it's actually a SQL DB running on a SUSE Linux server, and this is running on the Azure Stack. Let me show you quickly in Visual Studio. We prepared a code to add a new feature to the web application. Because to be more successful and grow our business, we thought it might be a good idea to add the possibilities to add important dates, such as your own birthday, so that we can send you a reminder or a coupon if you want to order flowers for your birthday. So here is the code. And because this wasn't in it, we also need a new column in the database where we can actually store that information. So let me go quickly back here to the browser. Go to the release pipeline, create a new release here. Click on create, then deep dive into the release three. Here we go. And boom, it's deployed. It's done. I've configured AKS in Azure to receive requests via Kubernetes running in Azure Stack to increase the number of pods to handle incoming requests. I've defined logic for container provisioning that limits the total number of containers I can run in my Azure Stack environment. And once that threshold is exceeded, new pods will be provisioned in Azure Cloud. So let me scroll down here in the menu. Here we see the application deployed on Azure. You see the different modules that we used from AKS to Traffic Manager to Container Registry. So if we switch over to the Azure Stack, 
you see here the machines that have K8S, those is the Kubernetes cluster that we operate here and the database as I have shown you before. Now let's go back to Azure, scroll down again, go to Application Insights, Live Metric Stream. Here you can see it's very quiet. We just have a few pods that are currently running. And so let me quickly minimize the browser and go here in our Linux subsystem for Windows. And, and we executed this program before. This will basically stress test the web application that forces to scale through. So let me go back to the browser, show you how this looks. Let's go back to the resource group here. Let me scroll down here to show you the alerts. The App Inside Alert allows you to configure a condition and action group. This particular action group uses an Azure function to direct Azure traffic to route new front end connections to the Kubernetes cluster in Azure. Let's take a closer look at this function. So I go back here, we go here into the Azure Stack to Azure function, cross cloud scale. With this Azure function, Northfield have been able to implement this functionality with a minimal amount of code. This Azure function uses an Azure service principle to enable or disable the Azure traffic manager's endpoints based on the scale action chosen. Let's quickly check how our stress test is doing. Here you see it successfully started to make lots of stress to the web application. So let's go back in here. Let me go back here, scroll down here again, so we can go to the live metric stream. Now here you see all the different pots. Here is the Azure stack that now has zero requests and you see the requests that on Azure now are being scaled. To allow the Azure Kubernetes cluster access to SQL database hosted in Azure Stack, we've created a VPN tunnel between Azure and Azure Stack and planned out our virtual network so that nothing overlaps. But to show you that the data really flows to the Azure Stack and not to Azure, let me show you the new feature that we just deployed with our birth date. So we can go to our account and I'm Lola Sunshine in this case. In this case, and here will be my date of birth. But let me show you quickly in the Data Studio Manager how it looks. Here you see the birth date was the added column that also was basically released once we created that pipeline and release or new release to be deployed to Azure and Azure Stack. But let's quickly execute this command here. And then here you see Lola Sunshine as before with no birth date. So let me go back to the browser and select here December 25th, scroll here, 1979, update it. Now we're back here, so let me go back to the Data Studio, execute this again, and here you can see the data is written on the Azure Stack database or on the SQL database on Azure Stack, and you can see it matches the birth date that we just updated. So remember, this case is about a customer who decided that they want to keep the data on premise, but they are still going to have to compete with those other companies that didn't make the same decision. With that cloud cross scale, you can basically minimize the hardware infrastructure that you need on premise and basically automatically scale immediately to Azure if you need more resources for the application layer while the database always stays on premise. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please feel free to comment and share with your colleagues. Thank you very much for your time for watching this and I wish you a great day.